Thursday and this week in celebration of Easter coming up I thought we might make an Australian Easter creature. A bilby! Let's get into it! Okay so let's talk about tools and materials. To make your bilby today you're going to need 8 ply 100% acrylic yarn also known as DK in a couple of different colours. I'm going for like semi-realistic colours today so I've got light grey, dark grey or black, some pink and some white. You're also going to need a pair of 20 millimeter safety eyes, your 3.5 millimeter hook, pins and needles, scissors, and some stuffing. But that's it. A written version of today's pattern will be made available to my patrons and will also be listed on my Etsy and I will leave links to both in the description down below for anybody who's interested. Now our bilby today is made mostly in one piece, starting at the tip of the nose and working all the way down to the tip of the tail. So we are going to start in our pink or whatever color you are using for the nose of your bilby. And I'm going to start by working a magic ring of six. In row two, we're going to work three repeats of an increase and then a single crochet. So for my increases today, I will be working in visible increases. So that just means that for the first stitch of an increase, I work through the front loop only. And for the second stitch, I work through both loops. Now that is a preference thing. You can do increases the normal or standard way if you prefer. So that should bring us up to nine single crochet around. We now want to decrease back down to six to create like the little ball for the tip of the nose. So row three is three repeats of a decrease and then a single crochet. And my decreases are once again worked as invisible decreases. And what that means is that I insert my hook through the front loops only of the two stitches I'm decreasing over, yarn over and pull up a loop through both of them, and then yarn over and finish off the stitch. So I've worked the first five stitches of that round. The way this pattern works is you always want to change colors in the stitch before you want the new color to be active. So the final stitch of round three is a single crochet and I'm going to use it to change to my gray. So to do that, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over or under and pull up a loop. So I've got two loops on my hook. I'm then going to hold my pink out of the way, grab my gray and pinch it on the inside of the work, the base of the stitch. Then just yarn over and pull through the two loops, finishing off that stitch, and then tug on the pink to kind of squish the stitch down into place. So you'll see there what you end up with is a finished single crochet in your pink, but your grey is now on your hook ready to go. So now that we have our grey on our hook, we're going to start working up the cone of the head. So row four starts with an increase, a single crochet, a decrease, a single crochet and then another increase. We're loading our increases on what will be the top of the head and we've, we've put a decrease on the underside just to help it curve under. For row five we're going to work a single crochet, three single crochet into the same stitch, three single crochet, And then three single crochet into the same stitch again. And finish off the row with a final single crochet. So you should have 11 stitches in your round. And I am going to trim off my pink at this point. And just tuck these away down inside the nose just to get them out the way. There we go. Okay, so we're now going to continue growing out the head. So row six starts with an increase. Eight single crochet, then 
again an increase and a final single crochet to get us back to the start of our row. So row 7 through 10 are basically the same thing, each one adding two increases to our round near the top of the head, growing our row total up to 21. stitches in our round and you'll be able to see there where those increases have sloped the forehead up but just working single crochet has left the chin running flat so a little bit of shaping in there then rows 11 and 12 are just 21 single crochet around for a combined total of 42 stitches like so so that brings us to the back of the head so we are now going to start subtly closing off at the top to round out the back of the head the lower half is going to continue into the curve of the body though so row 13 is going to start with two single crochet, then decrease, 15 single crochet round to the other side of the head, And then a final decrease to get our round down to 19 stitches. Ooh, and it's always, <laughs> and even for me, it's always a relief when the stitch count is actually what I expect it to be. <laughs> Row 14 starts with a decrease. And then it's just 17 single crochet back around to the start of our row. should now have 18 stitches in it. Now at this point we are going to stop and insert our eyes. So the ones I've got here are 20 millimeters which are quite large for this size of pattern. I just personally like the giant eyes on things but feel free to use smaller eyes if they were, if they are what you have on hand. Just for reference these are nine millimeter eyes which are the other ones that I have convenient and they are a more realistic size if that's what you're aiming for. So for my 20 millimeter eyes, I'm going to put them into row 10. So I know the pink brings us up to row 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm just going to plunk it fairly central into the side of the head and do the same thing on the other side. Now those are just sort of starting points. And next I'm going to look at it from a bunch of different angles. So you can see that they're crooked there until I'm happy that they are relatively aligned. And I think I can make my piece with that alignment there, though mine always come out a little bit crooked. They just do. So we snap our backs on. Let's see if I can't get those good clicky sounds for you. Hold on. Ready? Yeah, that wasn't bad. Okay, cool. So there are my eyes. So going back to our hook, we're going to finish narrowing off the neck now, starting with a decrease. And then our very first single crochet three together for this pattern. So there are two ways to do this stitch. The first way is you insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and do that in the next two stitches as well. So you've got four loops on your hook, then yarn over and pull through all four and finish off the stitch. So that's kind of like the normal way to do these stitches. I personally prefer the second way, which is an invisible method. And that is just like with the invisible decreases, I insert my hook through the front loop only of the next three stitches, yarn over and pull up a loop through all three, and then yarn over and finish my stitch. So either method is fine for this pattern. 
So after that, we are going to work 10 single crochet around to the other side of the head. And then another single crochet three together to bring us back to the start of our row. So that should bring us down to 13 stitches in our round and that is the narrowest point until we reach the tail anyway. So I am just going to stuff a little bit of stuffing into this head now. Get in there. There we go. So we're now going to continue this piece and grow out a bulb for the body starting in row 16. So we work three single crochet into the same stitch. A single crochet. And then three single crochet into the same stitch again. Now this is going to look like it's off to one side of the head and that is because it is. <laughs> Just bear with me on this. We're then going to work eight single crochet back around to the other side of the head. Then three single crochet all into the same stitch again. And a single crochet to finish our row. So that one there should help balance out the two that we've already done. It all, it all evens out in the wash. Row 17 starts with three single crochet. Three single crochet into the same stitch. And then 15 single crochet back around to our starting point. Once again, it looks like that increase that we've done is off to one side, but we're going to balance that out at the start of row 18. But we're going to balance that out at the start of row 18, starting with three single crochet all into the same stitch. See what I mean? So now that those two balance each other out, and then 20 single crochet back to the start of our round. like so and you should have 23 stitches in your round except I don't <laughs> this seems like an opportunity for me to show you how I would troubleshoot that so my row count is one stitch smaller than I would expect it to be so I'm going to start by just frogging one row so back to the end of row 17 and I'm going to count again So at the end of row 17, I had the right number of stitches, which is 21. So now I'm just going to work row 18 again, being careful not to accidentally skip any stitches and check my count again. And this time the stitch count is correct. So luckily I only had to go back one row this time. Sometimes I've, ha I've had to go back quite a ways, but that's why I stop recommend you stop at the end of every row and count, um, or at least every second or third row, just to save yourself the problem if it does occur earlier. If it occurs too much earlier, just chuck an increase in and keep going but <laughs> that's neither here nor there so here we are at the end of row 18 with 23 stitches in our row row 19 starts with five repeats of an increase and then a single crochet so there's an increase and there is a single crochet that's our first one we're going to do that four more times across the top of our bilby So there is our five, then we're going to work just 13 single crochet back to the start of our row. Leave 
leaving us with 28 stitches in our round. So row 20 is just 28 single crochet around. Like so. so we have two more rows growing this body to get up to the widest point around. So row 21 starts with three single crochet. An increase. Eight single crochet across the top of the body. And increase. Then 15 single crochet back to the start of our round. Bringing us around to 30 stitches. Row 22 then starts with a single crochet, then an increase, five single crochet, another increase, two single crochet, another increase, then five single crochet, and a final increase, and then just 13 single crochet back to the start of our row. So there we are at the widest part of our body and it should be 34 stitches in the round. So you'll see there in terms of shaping, this is what happens when you put all of your increases along one side, in this case the top, and no increases along the bottom. So you end up with sort of the bottom continuing straight, but the top growing or increasing as it were. So now we're going to work six rows of 34 single crochet around just to add some length to this body. Oh lord, what's six times 34? 180, 180 plus 24, 204 stitches for a combined total of 204 stitches. So that will build up the main ball of our bilby body. So there we are. Now that we have fed our bilby a couple of good meals, we just need to start closing off the butt to get down to where we want the base of the tail to start. So we start, so row 29 starts with nine single crochet. And then four repeats of a decrease and two single crochet. So that's our first repeat, we're going to do that three more times. like so. We're then just going to work nine single crochet back to the start of our round. So that row acts to sort of make the slope a little bit more gentle from the fattest part of the body, but what it also does is it gets us back around to the base six meaning multiples of six, which makes the rest of this really easy <laughs> to close off evenly. So row 30 is six repeats of three single crochet and then a decrease. So that's our first one. And we're going to do that five more times to bring our row down to 24 stitches. Row 31 is six repeats of two single crochet and then a decrease. So that's our first repeat and we're going to repeat that five more times around to bring our row down to 18 stitches.
So that's the end of row 31 and we are going to stop and stuff the rest of this quite firmly. We're then going to continue into row 32, which is six repeats of a single crochet and then a decrease. So that's our first one. We're going to repeat that five more times around to bring our row down to 12 stitches. So there we are. Row 33 is three repeats of two single crochet. And then a decrease. So that's our first repeat and we're going to do that two more times to bring our round down to nine stitches. So we are now at the base of the tail and we are just going to continue on from this body piece to make it. So row 34 starts with two increases. which should fall at the bottom of the tail. But then we're going to work two single crochet, a single crochet three together that should fall at the top of the tail, and then two single crochet back down the side. So if you're experiencing drift with this pattern, you can recalibrate with this row, because this is kind of the first row it matches again with, by making sure those increases fall at the bottom, and that single crochet three together falls at the top. Row 35 then starts with a single crochet, two increases, two single crochet up the side, a single crochet three together across the top, and then the last stitch of this row is a single crochet, but we're going to use that single crochet to change it to our dark grey or our black. That's because bilbies have black tails with white tips on them. Jeez, I just did that on autopilot, but that's the same way we did the colour change for the nose. So we're going to continue on from here using our dark grey or black. Black is also fine. Row 36 starts with seven single crochet. Decrease. And at this point you can trim off the light grey if you would like. Row 37 is six single crochet. And then a decrease. And then row 38 is five single crochet. And a decrease, leaving us with just six stitches in our round. So what those increases and decreases have done is slope our tail from where it was sitting in the middle of the butt <laughs> down, so it's going to drag against the ground the way, the way it should be sitting. Could we have just made a tube? Yes. Is it better this way? Absolutely. And now if you want to stuff the base of the tail, I do suggest you do it now. I am going to be leaving my tail completely unstuffed. We're then going to work seven rows of six single crochet around for a combined total of 42 stitches, changing to our white in the last stitch of row 45. We're then going to work in our white just one final row of six single crochet. And then row 47 is four single crochet and then a decrease, leaving us with just five stitches in our round. So 
So I'm going to trim off my dark grey now. I hope that eye tapping on the counter isn't too obnoxious. I don't know how to make it stop. It's annoying me. Oh, anyway, so we are then just going to work four rows of five single crochet around for 20 stitches in total. And then finish off. So I am going to take this remaining little scrap of yarn and we're going to pull it through the front loops only of each of the remaining stitches. And pull tight to close. I'm just going to tuck that end down inside the tail. So we are looking very mousy at the moment, but we're going to add a few more they're almost rabbit-like features, and it just takes us straight to Bilby. So we're going to pop this to one side and make a couple of long pointy ears. Now these ears would be correct if you made them in the grey, in the white, or in the pink, but I am going to be making mine in pink today with a little grey base to them to help them blend in with the head. So grabbing my pink once again, we're going to start with a magic ring of six. And then we're going to work six single crochet around. That's going to just give our ear a nice pointy little tip. In row three, we're going to work a single crochet. Three single crochet all into the same stitch. another single crochet and another three single crochet all into the same stitch. Then two single crochet back to the start of our round. So you should have 10 stitches in that round at the moment. Row four starts with two single crochet, three single crochet all into the same stitch. single crochet, three single crochet all into the same stitch, and then three single crochet back to the start of our row, leaving us with 14 stitches in the round. So we're then going to work six rows of 14 single crochet around for a combined total of 84 stitches leaving us with this little torpedo shape. Row 11, we're then going to do three single crochet. A single crochet three together to close in one side. Five single crochet. And a final single crochet three together to close in the other side. So that should leave you with just 10 stitches in your round. For row 12, we're going to work 10 single crochet around, but we're going to change to our gray in the 10th stitch. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this is our 10th stitch and we're going to change to our grey in it, same way as we did all of the colour changes on the body. So now to finish the ears we're going to work two rows of 10 single crochet around for a combined total of 20 stitches. And finish off. I'm trimming off any colours that I have still attached. So I'm not stuffing this piece, but what I am going to do is flatten it so that my finishing off point is on one edge. Then I'm just going to curve it around. So fold the base in half, stick your thumb in there, whatever, whatever works for you. That's one little ear and you are going to need a second one. 
So I'm going to pop those to one side. So the last couple of pieces we need to make are some little front paws and some little back paws. So these are tiny little pieces, blink and you will miss them. So for the front paws we're going to be starting in our white. So once again you could use pink if you prefer. And we're going to make a magic ring of six. And then for row two, we're going to work six single crochet around, changing to our gray in the sixth stitch. It's one, two, three, four, and five. And then this is our sixth stitch. We're going to change to our gray. So then in our grey we're going to work 7 rows of 6 single crochet around for a combined total of 42 stitches. Then finish off. So just simple little noodle arms today. So there's one and you are going to need to make two exactly the same and I am not stuffing mine. Follow your heart. Pop those to one side. The last thing we need to do is make two little paddlers for the back feet. So once again I'm going to be using white and grey just like I did with my front legs. You should match yours together accordingly as well. So we are going to start with a magic ring of six. In row two, we're going to work two repeats of a single crochet, an increase, And then a single crochet. It's one. We're going to do that again on the other side. Leaving us with eight stitches in our round. We're then going to work two rows of eight single crochet around for a combined total of 16 stitches. changing to our grey in the last stitch of row 4. For row 5 we're going to work two repeats of two single crochet and then a decrease. So that's our first one and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. to trim off my white at this point and then do one final round of six single crochet and finish off and I'm just going to squish that opening flat where it will attach to the body you don't need to like sew this shut or weave this shut so there is one little footsie flippery bit and two little footsie flippery bits. Okay folks, grab your pins and needles and let's get this little bilby assembled. We're going to start by pinning on the ears. So take the folded over base of each ear and pin it to the back of the head. fairly straight up in the air. We're then going to grab our front legs and once again just giving the top of them a squish. It seems to be how I start when attaching all of my pieces. 
I want you to find the narrowest point of the neck and we're going to line the front of the leg up with that narrow point of the neck so that two to three rows of this front paw overlap with the body. I'm just going to pin that in place. That's one. And I'll do the same thing on the other side with the other one. We're going to grab our little flippery feet and it doesn't super matter where you want to pop these but just place them on the underside of your bilby so that the little toes are kind of sticking out frog pose just try to make them even with each other that I just mean you put it down on any kind of flat surface and make sure it's not wobbly. Now I'm just going to take a needle and some of my main body grey yarn here and sew all of those pieces on. And there is our finished bilby. Now be careful leaving them unsupervised so they've been known to gather eggs. Thank you so much for indulging my little Australian themed Easter celebration this year. I hope you had fun making him with me today. Okay, bye! <laughs>